look ahead at 2017, at what we're going to do to make ourselves great, help make each other great and support each other, and what we're going to do to kind of set 2017 apart. It's events like these that really are all about inspiring and, and partnering together. Back in May um, of this year, we launched our Men as Allies initiative. We hosted a series of fireside chats focused on microbehaviors and unconscious bias, bringing men into the conversation. And for the first time in almost two decades of, of, of working uh, inside Capital One, I found myself in a, in a situation that, that, that uh, was just really enlightening to me. I found myself uh, the only man in a, in a room full of women. Six, 16 women, and it had never happened before in the 16 years I've been at Capital One. And it was striking to me how aware I was of being different and how it actually caused my brain to be so focused on the fact that I was different uh, that I was just not my usual witty, engaging, funny self. Uh, and it just struck me that if I'm feeling this in, in this scenario, how must, you know, how must uh, uh, anyone who's in a stand-up or in a team meeting or in kind of our usual day-to-day -day life uh, feel if, if they're so consciously aware of, of being different? So when I got married, my husband made an interesting observation, and he said, you know what, every time I meet your colleagues at work, or meet your boss or something, I always kind of feel like they treat you like their little sister or like their daughter. So really from the early 90s until today, I have to say I have had an incredibly blessed and storied career. I launched two nationwide paging companies. I was the lead project manager on the team that put GPS in a cell phone for the first time. Uh, I worked on the redesign of the Xbox for Microsoft, which personally was the greatest thing I ever did because I got to play games all day long. <laughs> it was awesome. And I also was this, the lead project manager in a project for Baxter Laboratories where we were creating a suite of medical devices that would render one pint of donated blood product 100% pathogen free. In technology to this day, men outnumber the women. Right, but partnering with men professionally is essential to our success. We have no choice. But only partner with people who treat you with respect and lift you up. Whether it's men or women, if they don't, walk away. Those that know me know that my favorite thing to do when I first walk into a room is look for the elephant. He's my best friend, or she. I like to name the elephant, I like to pet the elephant, I like to say what color it is, right? Like, that's the first thing I like to do is to get it out in the open. I spent all of my career in technology and about five minutes into it, I realized this lack of diversity thing, right? And my whole career became about that. So tech talent pipeline, getting more women into the tech field, increasing the diversity in our tech field, that's where it's been. And right now, the vast majority of men are thinking, hey, there's just not a lot of qualified women out there to hire. Funny part is, is if you ask the women what the problem is, only 12% of the women see that as the issue. That's a pretty big disparity, right? So we can't even agree on what's causing this issue. What's really underlying it all is unconscious bias. And that's kind of the scariest thing that we have out there. Why? Because nobody even knows they're doing it. I think that the journey that women take, um, it's so important that they have their male ally with them and their advocate. And that's why I brought John. I'm the token male. <laughs> John's my token male. <laughs> Taking some of Andy's leadership styles and cues, we really built up a, a better, longer term approach and we actually started to make more money. And so we really started to see not only just because of uh, her being a female, but her bringing different experiences, different styles to the table uh, really helped us relate more to our prospective clients. And we started to really uh, not only with our clients, but with our employees, start to have more meaningful engagements. I get so excited about the journey, and I want to take everybody on that journey with me, but I need to slow down and make sure that people, A, understand the journey, are part of that journey, are bought into that journey. And so, you know, as, I, as I've grown in my career, and it's been three years now since Don and I worked together, but as I've taken up new leadership roles, I really recognize that about myself. And I recognize that I really need to take the time so people are bought in. And then we can lay the foundation and we can be more successful. What you feel like kind of looking back what your biggest strengths are to kind of help you get to where you've come today. Uh, it was relentless. 
you really um, being able to to follow through on everything um, it's kind of that with relentless kind of became perseverance an incredible attention to detail was always this very odd skill set that I seem to always have how important is kind of looking the part and and what kind of experiences or stories can you guys share uh, on, on that theme mom said to dress to the position you aspire to I never took it to mean necessarily to dress to the position that you want other people to think you're suited for. Uh, you know, for me, I, 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 I like to dress up every day even though we have a business casual environment because that I get a lot of personal power out of that. How do we actually combat that, you know, uh, reasoning and how do we present our case that we are doing the right thing? We have to unlearn our unconscious biases, right? Uh, or at least learn that they're maybe not the best approach and then learn something else and do it and do it and do it and do it until it becomes a more natural approach. So how do we you know inspire and engage them to meet us halfway? I think that one of the things is, is just holding people accountable for not just, you know, you were talking about the bottom line, like not just the bottom line, but how do they treat their people? How happy are their people? What's their retention rate? I mean, there's so many other data points that we now have access to that doesn't, isn't just profitability. I'm not saying that profitability isn't important. I'm just saying that there are other data points that we should be evaluating our managers and our leaders on. You know, what's allowed you to, to develop that skill and, and maybe also a slight nuance of what was unique to cross that gender boundary and build relationships with the opposite gender. It all came down to being, the initial connection came for something that wasn't professional, right? Because, you know, everyone likes to talk about themselves. Everybody likes to have, make a personal connection with someone. It's a lot more fun. I mean, yes, d data drives the world, IoT drives everything. All those conversations are awesome. But at the end of the day, you know, it's like, did you watch the last episode of Westworld? <laughs> you know? It was so confusing. I, it was kind of confusing. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you guys for sharing your insights. Thank you guys for asking the great questions and engaging on this great topic. And um, I appreciate you all very much. And I'm excited to kind of continue building these friendships today and going forward. So, round of applause.